All right. So am I okay? You guys hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Batman put us something about audio here. All right. All right, cool. Thanks. Uh, so I appreciate y'all joining. It is uh, November the 7th. We're heading towards Thanksgiving, huh? Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite holidays. So oh, I don't yeah, mind love it. that. I Anything love with it. food, love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I, I was thinking of a topic and there's so many interesting ones, but I wanted to revisit this. And I know that, uh, that Mocha was, was push, pushing the idea of Let's get people to work on the the uh, security agreement for the uh, you know data uh, data collection. I did, so, and then I was like, yeah. oh, but I can't. I don't know if I can head the charge. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, people should do it. You should each do it yourself. So per, the purpose of tonight's call is uh, hopefully to motivate you to get you a little outraged, just to mm -hmm. uh, or at least get you to thinking a certain way. So before I get started on that, let me just mention aceofcoins.club is is where we have this content and video series, and I do. Like now what I'm doing uh, when I work on a client's case file is I'll do a video series and I put it in the members area. And sometimes I have to redact client information, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's already public record. It depends on what the client wants. But anyways, I'm doing that. So that way, if I'm solving somebody's problem one way, I'm just going to tell everybody, you can go see how I did it mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. So that's at aceofcoins.club, aceofcoins.com, where people can do one-on-one -on -one consultations with me. The way I work is... I consult, I do a year's consulting. That's usually what is needed for many people. And in, when I first start out, I usually recommend the formation and use of an LLC. So just realize I'm not selling LLCs, I'm selling consulting and I provide the LLC as my first thing. If you come back to me three months later, like this one um, woman did just now, and she said, I think I'm gonna need another LLC because of such and such. I don't charge more money for that. Now, again, I'm not here to do 15 LLCs for you. I right. you want to do your own, but so anyways, that's what I'm doing. So that's out there. And I've, you might start seeing some advertising. I'm building out the social media and I've got some promotional sites. One is called, uh, uh cryptos are not taxable.com. So <laughs> I'm not really trying to, you know, promote that to you guys. You guys already know that stuff and you understand mm -hmm. the technical details, but I'm trying to reach out to new people. So anyways, all that's going on. <clears throat> and, um, so what I want to show you again is uh, it's not the same thing I showed you before. It's more of the same. Okay. I'm, I hope I gave you, I'm providing with something that would be more compelling even. So what I want to focus on is the collection use and storage, the collection use and storage of your identifying information. And I mm -hmm. like to say that in two comes in two categories. Your I have that thing on again. Your biometric data. You can you guys can unmute, okay, Moko and Ray. Sorry about that. Uh, the collection, use, and storage of your biometric data. This is your physical features uh, and behavior patterns, like the way you walk. Okay, it's called mm -hmm. your gait. The dimensions of your, the palm of your hand. Okay, your retina, mm -hmm. your fingerprints, uh, the actual your actual face. All right, and mm -hmm. that also with your biographical data, which has to do with. The, the old data we, we were used to using, your SSN, date of birth, address, email address, phone number, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You're not going to avoid it. Mm -hmm. I know there's many people promoting technology and the practice of using, you know, v, VOIPs or, you know, what do you call them? VPNs. Okay, do all that. But when you listen to what I'm saying, again, hopefully it, maybe it's new to you or maybe it finally dawns on you, you're going to want your data to be collected, used and stored by all these companies. Now, because it should make you money. It's property. <laughs> it's property. And you're abandoning the property and you're abandoning the property rights. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if I wrote a brilliant song and then I just let, let someone sing it and he made $27 million off of it in eight years. And I don't get anything from it, but it's my song. That's why we have licensing. That's why we have copyrights. And so why are you just giving away data that's about yourself uh, to these corporations without terms, or mm -hmm. you're just by default, you're accepting the state's terms. And some of the states are pretty good, by the way, Illinois is pretty good, but, and so is Texas, but for they to decide what's to be done in terms on your data, you should be deciding that. And you can just like the banks decide what the terms are on the title to your house. When you borrow money from the bank, the banks decide that why, because they're funding the whole party, right? So mm -hmm. if you're funding the party, when you go engage with retailers and businesses, mm -hmm. you should be deciding the terms. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me just start off by, I'm going to do a, 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 a screen sharing here. And uh, let's just, I, 
I, I wanted to, I had these concepts. Before I do that, I had these concepts I'm going to share with you. So this discussion tonight is on these premises. So the first premise, and let me tell you a story. So this is this is how I do things. This is how I look at things. So this is a little bit off subject, but it's similar. This happened, let's say back in 2007 or so. And we, we uh, bought a house in this community of 83 households. There were 83 people in this one street. It was a big circle in Orlando. I don't live there anymore, but uh, it was a nice big house. And they had, the developer left us with a nice, beautiful gate system. Okay. Now the people mistake, the people live there. My neighbors mis mistook that for a security gate system. It's not, it was just for cosmetic reasons. And here's why I'll explain how I, I already knew this, but this is how I kind of stirred up the hornet's nest and all, all kinds of nastiness came from that. But so I go to the HOA meeting and they're talking about the gate and how they're going to impose these rules and, and the codes and all this stuff. And that they're going to start making people do stuff like give up their driver's license to get the code. It's just crazy. They were a bunch of Nazis. So I go into the meeting, sit in the back. They don't know me. I'm sitting in the back. And they're having the meeting talking about the security gates, security gates, security gates. So when they opened it up for questions, I said, hey, about these security gates, what kind of indemnification are you providing in the event that one of our homes get burglarized? Oh, we're not doing that. And I said, well, you don't have an insurance policy to cover my home in case the security gates fail. And they said, what security gates? And I said, well, the ones you've been talking about, the whole meeting you've been talking about the security gates. Oh, those aren't security gates. Well, then what are they? <laughs> oh, oh, it was like the nuclear war because they realized there, there was no, they can't provide the security. They're not, they're not funded for this, right? Your HOA can't guarantee that you're not going to get burglarized. And then it can't indemnify you against the loss due to a burglary or something of that nature. And they have these gates there and they can't call them security gates anymore because I was there. <laughs> you know, I asked him, so they, so because you call it security gate, well, does that mean that you're going to provide security? And then if you do, then that means you're liable if you fail. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a big thing. So this is the attitude you should have. You want my data. I'm going to say, so what I, that story I just gave you, just keep that in mind. The next premise is this. Okay. So. I'm going to, I wrote this down. So I don't, I know I'm going to miss stuff, but I want to give you the most that I can. So the third party collection of your data. All right. It's a data breach. It's not a breach because you gave the data willingly. Let's just say you gave it willingly, right? Or you gave it following adequate notice. Let's just say. So it's not a data breach because you gave your data like your retina scan, which I won't do, but I'm just saying, let's say you do that, right? So you, you gave it willingly and it's that in itself is not a data breach, but the party you gave it to can never guarantee the security of your data. Even if he says, I will, he can't. Mm -hmm. Not only can he not do that, there is no underwriting that would allow him to do it because he can never get insurance for it to back up his claim that he would indemnify you against a data breach. Mm. That's why we have statutes that pertain to the protocols that these companies have to follow when there is a data breach, because then they're accountable to the government. That's kind of cool. Okay. But I'm going to tell you. And they're that, doing that instead of insurance. Well, that's everything. They, I'm, I'm going to show you that, that there is there is insurance for this, but I'm going to show you how you're not covered. <laughs> <laughs> Of course not. I'm going to show you. All right. You should, you should really get all excited over this. Okay. So that's the other premise is that using your identifying information, your, your data, biographical biometric data on a regular basis with retailers and your business that you're interacting with is a data breach. Now here's where the data is being breached. It's not between you and the party that you're given the data. And it's not on the premise that the company is going to share it with somebody else. Cause I think they're all doing it. I think they're lying to you about, they're not going to do it. They're all doing it somehow, mm -hmm. but that's not the data breach. The data breach is the fact that they cannot control the security of the data. They can, and they cannot guarantee it. And they're not insured for that. They don't have the funding for it either way. It's always a data breach. The moment it's acquired by them. Mm -hmm. All right. Now you're going to hear this frequently. And I just want to pass this concept off to you. Uh, and then I'm going to go over these articles. So, um, all right. 
Will, you want to ask, how do you get the money? How do I get the money? <laughs> how do I get the money? All right, give me a chance, man. <laughs> I want to tell you. I'll tell you. You guys can do it if you want. I you don't know, care. All, the, all the medical providers are getting data breaches right now. Everybody's medical information is being Look, hacked. You could make a claim right now against pick them. Just pick one. You could make a legitimate lawsuit against any of them for a data breach. You almost should be doing that. So mm -hmm. when, when there's a claim that law enforcement, it, the data collection is for law enforcement purposes to collect or, the data. Or the airport security scans. Well, it's the same, same thing. To protect against or prevent actual or potential fraud or some other crime. So, okay. So if someone says he's doing that to prevent a crime, does he have a legal duty to do that? Okay. Mm -hmm. With would the, okay, so then that would that would tell you that there's a law, there's a statute that says a private party has to do a thing to prevent the commission of a crime. Mm -hmm. How does that make any sense? How is anyone even competent to do that? Donut. You can't Donut. do it. <laughs> All right. So, but understand how criminal statutes work. I want to just tear this apart. I want mm -hmm. you to think about how this works. And this is the, one of the principles I want you to understand. When someone says we're doing it for law enforcement purposes. Okay. Since when is there a law that prevents a crime? Look at your mm -hmm. murder statute. Does it prevent you from killing somebody? Hell no. What does it do? It, it punishes you or, or, or uh, you know, it has consequences for you. Yes. It's purely penal or punitive. Mm -hmm. If you do it, mm -hmm. that's what criminal law is. It imposes penalties if you break them. It doesn't prevent you. Now, maybe it'll discourage you, maybe. But as you can see, we still have these crimes being committed. So is it working? Not really. But the penalty is there. That mm -hmm. works for the most part. Okay, so just understand, if someone is saying, we're doing this for to prevent fraud. Okay, first of all, am I a suspect and are you under a duty? Right. Thing? Right. So where, where's that nexus? And also, what duty do you have? And, and if you did have a duty, what law actually prevents anyone from committing a crime? None. So what you just said is retarded. I, I often think when they're talking about prevent crime, they're really talking about you. That they're right. considering me a criminal and they're trying to prevent, they, they're going to track you, me. So, so you, I tell them, you tell them, oh, don't worry, I'm not involved in a crime. So you can just, you know, bypass your rules for me. Mm -hmm. What? You can't? Oh, am I a suspect? Yeah. Anyways, so you get the idea. So mm -hmm. all right, now look, I, I just, I see your comment here. Class actions are for attorneys to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it does change public policy or whatever, but class actions don't serve you. Individual claims. Now I'm going to show you how to do something here. Um, once again, I'm going to show, well, I want you motivated first. I'm going to show you how to do something where you don't need class actions. You have way more power than a class action. Okay. So let's go do a, sh a screen share and I'm going to see that. And bear, bear with me because these are some articles and there's so much information. I just, mm. I want to try to get through it and, and show you. Uh, so, all right. So what I'm going to start with, I've got it all in the same window. So these are data brokers now. Mm. A data broker, do you guys ever hear of this company? Do you ever- can't even pronounce it. Right. I notice how I didn't say the name. You're right. I didn't <laughs> Axiom, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Next. Experian, I've heard of. Okay, we get the credit. Okay. I interact mm -hmm. with them. Transunion. So these are all yes. credit report. Mm -hmm. Well, look at Oracle, Data Cloud, CoreLogic. Now, let me just show you an example. So CoreLogic, mm -hmm. let's let's look at what it's doing. It's collecting information from public records, just like LexisNexis does. Mm-hmm. It's collecting real estate. Real estate property, especially property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nothing wrong with that, really. So anyways, but my point here to show you this data axel, Nielsen Marketing Cloud, that's been around for a century. Equifax, mm -hmm. Foursquare Labs. Now, look at, look at, now see how they have this little thing here where you can opt out of their data collection. Mm -hmm. That's not for us on this call, I would suggest to you. You're not gonna to wanna to opt out. What you wanna do is make a claim on the data they're collecting. Don't remove it because you can't remove it. Think about mm -hmm. it, When I watch. Look at, okay, Foursquare. 
Who are they interacting with? Uber. Any of y'all use Uber? So I have you, twice. Every time you, yeah, every time you use Uber, you're, Foursquare is getting your data. So if you opt out and then use Uber, what, what have you done? It's back again, you repopulated it. Yeah, yeah, don't opt out. Put a lien on your data. Watch this. Samsung and Twitter. Now I mentioned before, uh, and I'll say this in different ways, but Elon Musk bought Twitter for its data, not free speech. He's a liar. And I hate, I hate Tesla cars. It's mm -hmm. such a retarded use of technology. And by the way, if you want a cleaner environment, if you're going to look at the cars as a cause of the polluting environment, and then don't go electric. Well, okay, there's that, there's that, but don't, don't, uh, and, and as far as climate change goes, I think most of you guys understand it's all false anyways, it's all, it's all the whole thing is false. But uh, if you want a cleaner air, you simply go back to the 80s technology before they had the fuel injection and you simply modify the configuration of the carburetor and you'll get a thousand miles per gallon. Mm -hmm. It's already been done in the 40s. Mm -hmm. so anyways, so so the the retail interaction is always going to be collecting your data. It's so pervasive. You're not going to opt out, really. It's just a useless waste of your time. Look at Wells Fargo, AT&T. You're just never going to opt out, really. You're mm -hmm. going to opt out and then opt back in. What's Amazon, <laughs> Walmart, yeah. Netflix. So let them have your data. Because check this out. If I put, let's say, let's say I go ahead and most of us, I have an Amazon account. <clears throat> I buy stuff. What I should do is put a lien on the data that Amazon has collected about me and, and use whatever data I want to use, right? Now, if I do that, the data that Amazon is collecting about me gets transferred over to Nielsen and Nielsen then has the liability that Amazon had in interacting with me. My lien follows my data. So, so now Nielsen is getting a data that costs mo more money than it would for everyone else who's not putting a lien on its data. And Amazon is feeding it to Nielsen. Why wouldn't I do that? Now, I know this is like not tangible yet. Put a lien on my data. It goes, woo, <laughs> what? Okay. So anyways, you get the idea here. So if there's this back door sort of like structure, this business world, okay, if you will, of behind all these retailers, mm -hmm these companies you never heard of before. And I'm just showing you 10. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you even heard of. I can show you 500 you've never heard of. This is a multi-trillion dollar market and it's in using your data and you're feeding it. You're paying for it. You're funding it. And so if that's going on, can you ever believe a retailer in the front end who's telling you that he's not going to share your data with anybody else? It's impossible. Right. You'd be out of business. You can't do that. They're lying to you. They change the definitions. Here's a question. And someone's asked, would you need to put multiple liens on different companies? Is there a way to do a lien with the data brokers themselves? So that there's a source that does all this stuff? I would okay. start with all the brand name companies you're interacting with on a daily basis, including Facebook. Well, I mean, like, as opposed to Amazon and blah, 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 could you go to you Axiom and Experian and do liens? You can do that. Yeah, you could, but but you have already so you have hundreds you can do in the in the front end retail. Why not just go up to the retailers and make sure your uh, security agreement includes all the assignees and users and beneficial parties of your data? That way, that lien attaches to all these creatures. Mm -hmm. Don't don't try to work too hard here. Okay, you'd be smart and use your contract to make your lien attach to everything. Whoever touches that data now is a, a debtor to you. But yeah, if I if I know there's affirmatively and overtly some company collecting and using my data and storing it, I'm going to put a, a security agreement against him. I, he's going to be my debtor in the next security agreement. And all I do is take the security agreement I do one for Google, and then I just change the name to the next company. Unless I want to change some of the terms, which I probably don't even need to do that. So there you go. There's the should, world of your data collection. We should do the grocery stores and, and part of the we, we get free food. Yeah. I mean, even if you just walk in a, let's say you walk into the grocery store and you pay cash for everything, right? Well, they got your video on everything from when, when you walked in, when you're in the parking lot, uh, you know, at the uh, point of sale. Yeah, put a lien on. Uh, anyways, let's go to the next one. So this one, <laughs> they're saying, it's, it's, that, it's that adage where people say, what could possibly go wrong? 
And the title starts out, the road to, dis to disastrous biometric data collection is paved with good intentions. What could possibly go wrong? I'm not doing anything illegal. You can put a, a video camera in my bathroom. It's okay. My house, you know, all this stuff. Well, you're not going to stop it. And I kind of don't want them to stop it because it's just like a really bad idea. Let's say you're in a, in a corporate environment, okay? And you, there's a really bad idea and you raise your hand and, and, and you're on the board, right? And you raise your hand and say, look, guys, I think this is a really bad idea. And you're the only one that's saying that. And you, you're you going to put your neck on the line, right? Because you might get fired, right? So you, put, you raise your hand and say, that's a really bad idea. Uh, and then you get like chastised for this, right? So either you do that and or... You come back the next day and you say, you know what? This is the best idea ever. And then you, you're the biggest proponent of it because you know it's going to fail fast. The faster you push it, the faster it'll fail. That's another way to deal with it, right? It's a really bad idea. So I'm all for this data collection because at some point there's going to be a breaking point, I think. Maybe I'm naive. I don't know. So acceleration and planned biometric data collection for recent months. Yeah, all the technology. Why do you think these companies, how do they get their funding, these companies that like, it used to be here in Orlando, okay? Uh, Disney World was used to test all these devices to collect your mm -hmm. biometric data. Mm -hmm. They've been using it already. They're doing it in the third world countries. They're doing it with your tourist attractions, right? You get the foreign people coming over here. They spent all this money and time to come out to Orlando, Florida, from Germany. You think they're going to complain about giving up their thumbprint? No, heck no. So they'll get it. They could test all the test all the equipment, right? And then turn it over to the government and say, yeah, it's working great. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. So- yeah, all this infrastructure, all these businesses are getting funding because they know it's going to pay for itself. It's, it's a good investment. So look what's going on, right? So they start with the face ID. And at first, they portray it in the movies as evil. But yet, if, if not everybody, but many, many people are doing it, right? To access their phone and stuff. Oh, so convenient. I don't have to have a password and all this stuff. Okay, so now your credentials for accessing important things, software and things where you have valuable information and data that may have to do with your money is permanent. If it's your biometric data, it's permanent. You can't change the password. So just think about it. But anyways, there were situations where they did some testing. They were in the UK, right? They were trying to do this on the kids and the parents said, uh-uh, that's now, but it's not going away. They got pushback, right? So then they re-engineer it. They do stupid videos like I put up on, uh, published on Telegram earlier. Stupid videos like that to overcome this pushback that you're seeing, okay? Then they do it again until they get enough people to where all of a sudden everybody around you is doing it and then it doesn't matter what you think because <laughs> you're the minority now. So same thing here, right? They tried at the, the, another reason for the phony pandemic was to get people to accept this technology and doing everything apart from each other and, and, and whatever. So, uh, and so forth and so on. So here's another example, right? So let's go down. So look, the executives are determined. They want to push this. They need to. It's money for them. And uh, it's a way to manage people, really, because a big business is uh, making more money when it's managing people effectively. I watch this. I mean, I, I'm here in Orlando. I'm watching this at all the parks. And one thing I, one thing I concluded in observing like SeaWorld and Universal Studios and all these places um, is that they're excellent at managing people. Mm. You can't argue with it. They got the best systems ever. And if you think about it, our government is really only about managing people. It doesn't matter that you have the constitution, all this, that's all just for publicity. Uh, what they really want to do is manage people, okay? Mm. So so they want to replace uh, you know paper tickets with faces and this sort of thing. And, uh, so at first people will object and then later they're just gonna submit to it uh, and so forth. Um, let me just quote, use the, we use the phony pandemic to change the rules. The fake pandemic is bigger enemy. And therefore, so they're saying, yeah, well, it's lesser of two evils. Lose your privacy, but then save your life. And just so you guys mm -hmm. know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something that's a little off topic, but you need to understand when they are talking about the, when it, whenever I, when people talk about the pandemic, you have to put the adjective in there, the fake pandemic, because it was fake. There is no such thing as this, whatever they called it, right? Uh, and moreover, germs, well, let's say, let's just use the word viruses. They're not contagious pathogens. So I'm going to tell you something that you won't believe, but I'm just, you can do your own research. The common cold is not transmitted by person to person like you think. That's not what's happening. Germs don't go from one person and infect another person. 
your body's intelligent. That's not happening. So just there's a premise there that this may help you. So they look, they have all these, look, this is a trade name, true face mm -hmm. facial recognition, right? Look at somebody put a lot of money into this. If you do some research on true face, you're going to find there's lots of money invested in this. It's kind of scary. You know, they're going to push this. Right. So anyways, let's see. Okay. Public safety and free societies, you know, passive tech. Let's see here. Um, right. So this is where I have a, a, a question. Where's all the data going? Right. So we understand biometric data is, has been used for centuries in commerce. Right. I gave you the example the other day. If I get hired at a job and uh, the guy that interviewed me is my boss. Right. So I show for work when he tells me to next week and he knows it's me. Why? Because he remembers what I look like. <laughs> it's that guy. He, uh, he understands my face. He remembers. OK, that guy hired him last week. Here he is. Right. And, and if it's somebody else, then I introduce myself and everybody knows they look at my face. They know that's the guy. Right. Well, the problem we have is if I. If I allow my image to be captured on a, a medium that's permanent and that I don't know who actually has access to that, it doesn't matter what I'm told. It's like I said before, it's a data breach. As soon as someone else has collected my data in a way that's electronic or stored in some way, it's a data breach. Even if someone takes a photograph on a Polaroid, right? Think about it. Photograph on a Polaroid, piece of paper, there's my photo. And then he takes it somewhere and I never know what he does with it. That's still a problem. Okay. Many, so it, the, the phony pandemic, it got people to accept the surveillance type technology, right? And so forth. And they're even calling it surveillance. Yeah. Everybody got scared of like menus. I don't even know what they did, but just restaurants like no paper menus using QR code, which is that's another what I mentioned. That's data what I mentioned. breach. You don't know how that QR code is. You cannot programmed. be infected by, with a, there's no such thing as a contagious disease that we're, tissue or germs travel from one person to another and infect you. I know that's the second time I said that. So that's what the implicate, that's what the premise is on this article. Mm -hmm. And I can answer that question because you're saying, well, then John, how does someone get sick if the germs don't travel from person to person? We can probably talk about that later, but right now I just want to focus on this. So a smaller company unaffiliated with your typical tech giant might feel like less threat. Okay, the moment Amazon or Google acquires the company, right? So imagine if your mom and pop, hypothetically, collect your data some way, then Google buys the company. Now Google has your data, right? You see how that's going? But what if the company sells out or something, or you know, someone acquires certain assets from the company and the company collects consumer data, customer data, and it's on its balance sheet, right? That's an asset, property of the company. So just, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know. That's what I'm saying. It's a data breach. It's always a data breach. All right. So yeah, we're not, we're not getting, it's going to, it's going to get worse. So this is what I'm saying. I think a way to manage this is to claim your, the property rights you have in this identifying information. Okay. For example, I have a property right using my SSN date of birth and legal name to identify myself because you don't. And I have control over that. I, I'm responsible for it and I have a right to use it, but you don't. That makes it mine. So I have a property right with all those things together as they're used to identify me uniquely. I don't have a property right in the series of digits for my SSN, nor my date of birth, nor my legal name, because maybe maybe uh, someone else has that same name, right? But not my same name and date of birth, chances are, right? So because it's unique to myself, then yeah, I have a property right there, which I can claim, but I can also abandon the property right and let someone put all the terms he wants on it and then make all the money he wants on it and not cut me in on it. And then I can't have anything to say about it. And I waive my rights, don't I? We talk about waiving rights and all this stuff, but you're missing it mm -hmm. if you're not looking at this stuff. All right, let me switch over to the next page. Now, this is very telling. The basics, usage and privacy concerns for biometric data. So corporate attorneys, this I believe, I believe this article was written by an attorney who's advising other attorneys. This is very important because these attorneys, you'll find out they're involved in risk management for the collection, use, and storage of customer biometric data, biographical data. This is what I was getting at earlier with my story on the uh, security gates for the HOA, okay? They understand of the liability for collecting someone's property. There is liability. 
And now you're going to find, when I show you this, you're going to find the weakness that you can use. So unlike many countries, there's no comprehensive data privacy law. I'm going to say that one again. Unlike many countries, there is no comprehensive data privacy law. What is the law of property? What is the law of the property with respect to the title to the house you got a mortgage? What's the law of the title? It's the mortgage, right? Mortgage. Yeah. The mortgage is the law. It's its own law. The mortgage is the law. So is any other lien attached to the title? Yeah, I was Starting thinking that's statute. not a true statement. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, there's there are other liens. There's claims on your title because that's mm -hmm. what a title is. It's a way for claims to be prioritized and be public record and then function. Our society functions that way. So how do you write the law with the use, storage, and collection of your private identifying information? A security agreement mm -hmm. that establishes a perfected security interest in that property. You have to write it and record it. You have every right to do that. And the UCC helps you do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't need to sit down at a meeting and convince them or negotiate this. And it's you don't that, need a biodimetric data law either because you've already got access. Yeah, I mean, to it's nice to have a law that's somewhat, maybe it's favorable, but in, mm -hmm. the, in the end, I want to be the one that makes the rules on the use of my data. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see there's more, there's more, uh, more benefit to that. So in the absence of federal action, more and more state governments are enacting privacy laws. Yay, but I, I don't care. Most states already have laws aimed at data breaches, but they don't they don't really define a data breach the way I just did. And I think mm -hmm. my definition is more accurate. Mm. Um, but there's five states that have the decent set of laws. Um, so this does help. Illinois has been a great example. Uh, and so let's talk about what biometric data is. They're defining biometric data as we understand, okay, it's all there, right? Look, the shape of your ear, the shape of it. That's interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. Voice matching. How many have you? How many of you have used your phone where you record your voice and send the recording? Do you think that's the end of it? <laughs> Someone's matching that. That is being matched in some way. There's some software that's capturing that information and using it in some way i couldn't even begin to tell you so let's look at what these attorneys are saying how is biometric data used so uh to authenticate your identity right in an automated way so people aren't involved you know um they, during the fake pandemic uh they want to say so here's the thing if if you're allowing the use of your biometric data right it can be associated with your medical records meaning compulsory disclosure of your medical records automatic disclosure mm -hmm. What? I'm not required to disclose my medical records, but why has that changed? Mm -hmm. Because you claim there's a deadly virus that's circulating. Mm -hmm. Ignorance is the virus, okay? Right, 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 <laughs> you right. You want right, to call right. it what it is. But see how what they're doing is they're they're trying to tie in, oh, it's automatic. You have to disclose your medical records. And then we mm -hmm. have the biometric data thing. And mm -hmm. what? you got two big problems there. So here's a simple example, biometric ID action. Okay, somebody okay, needs access to the bank. And they do this. Okay, so it, yeah, it's you're getting certain access, but again, uh, what's going to guarantee the uh, security of the data, right? They, and they're promoting these things in the movies, like it's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Like, did you see um, what was it? I think it was, it was well, it was uh, Jason Bourne when he went to access. I was going to say the Bourne stuff. Yeah, he went to access his vault, and it was uh, he had this long code that he had memorized or it was on a, it was an embedded in his body. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and he could just project it onto a thing and then they would have the thing, but then also he had a handprint. Mm -hmm. It had two factor authentication for him to get access. Right. With his body. Yeah. And you see how they introduced this technology. Mm -hmm, with, mm -hmm. Oh, it's really cool. Yeah. Jason Bourne's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he puts his hand up on the screen and it just passes right by your brain. You're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's good. Mm -hmm. But that's, see how they introduced this. Right. So anyways, it goes on. So here's what, we're, this is where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. So examining biometric data usage, action items for in-house counsel, in-house counsel for corporations. These are the people that are going to look at your security agreement. And if you don't have one, these are the people that write the policy regarding the use of your data. What are their concerns? This is going to be very telling. Mm -hmm depending on what in-house counsel find in, in the terms. So the, so the attorneys 
involved with companies that are in doing this, they're asking these questions. Is the company's public facing privacy policy? What's that? The privacy statement on its website, right? Right, right. Does it honestly and properly reflect the use of the biometric data? I'm gonna say no every time. Hmm. But how do you how do you ever know this? But the lawyers no. know this is a problem, right? So imagine this. Let's say you just stop listening to me what I'm saying right now. And you wrote a letter to like, I don't know, pick your cable company, right? And you wrote a letter to the general counsel for the company and you said, um, I think you're using my data for purposes other than what you disclosed to me. If please somebody do that, just that one thing and please share with the, me the response. It will be very telling. Oh no, we're only gonna use it for the thing we described in the privacy statement. Or unless it's like they're lying to you, maybe it'll be some confusing statement they'll make, right? But just that alone, right? Does the company have a policy? Does it have a policy that specifically talks about biometric data? Um, there was one, sometimes you'll see, um, you'll see the use of the term likeness. You've heard me use that term, right? Mm -hmm. Your likeness consists of your biometric data, among other things. Um, is the data secure using the latest data security protection? Who knows that? Lawyers don't even know the tech. They don't even understand the language of that technology. They don't, don't even know. That. They, no, say, they, wouldn't... they vendor it out anyway. So right. Like... So how does how does a lawyer know that? He's supposed to manage the risk. And what's he going to do? Talk to an IT specialist. You better hope he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Get the lawyers responsible for the risk. That's what I'm saying. None of them are competent to do this. Mm -hmm. Because the IT guy would also have to be the lawyer. Mm -hmm. It can happen. Now, has the company given proper notices? They're always going to do that. They're going to say, yeah. They're going to rely notices. on them. That's There's the all that stuff that you can't read before you. That's, yes, that's the best way to protect you, to protect themselves against claims you might make. But when you file a security agreement, it bypasses all of this. They can give you all the notices. <clears throat> transfer the liability to you with the notice. When you file the, the security agreement, you transfer you the liability back. back onto them. And then you have to put your terms in there. This is what we're talking about. You like? Like, like? Yeah. Do we like so far? You okay. like. All right. Never let someone use your car without terms. Have you ever done that? Of course I have. Actually, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> a friend. Yeah. That's right, hell yeah. Well, you let me drive your, or you let son drive your car. All right. You Sometimes do it too. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes <laughs> that happens. <clears throat> so does the legal department understand the, the, the laws? Who cares? Mm. Hey, don't that doesn't matter. And as if anything got proven during COVID, no, they don't. <laughs> now, uh, have a process to vet new ideas and projects that involve the collection, use, and storage. It, they're not competent to do any of these things, but these right. are good questions. They're good you questions. See, this is what their risk is. These are where their risk yeah. areas are. Mm. Your your retention policy, your security agreement covers all this. You're telling them. Here's what your risk is. It's one, two, three, and it's going to cost this much money. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to show you how to use this and not have to rely on the court system. So cyber risk insurance coverage. Now, what the heck? Cyber risk insurance cover biometric data claims. Okay. So if I go back to that first example where I told you guys just a few minutes ago, I said, hey, write a letter and talk about this, right? Uh -huh. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to trigger this question. Yeah, you might get an answer from cyber, cyber risk insurance. Are we insured for this? Oh. Are we insured? And if and if he's right, if he's telling us, if what he's saying is right, we might owe him some money. We have to notify the insurance company. So we're covered to see if we're cut. What? They would pay you? Do you all understand the, the term cyber? Just so we're clear here. I think what it is? means anything that goes over the internet. Almost. Cyber has to Robotic? do Robotic? Well, it's no, it's it's more it has to do with information control systems. And there's okay. versions of that phrase, but basically the concept of cyber is information control systems, okay? Just you should understand that. Okay. So there's a great promise in the use of biometric data, of course, but it's going to be exploited and people are gonna get run over by it. They're already getting run over by it. I'm not gonna, there's so many stories, but I'm not gonna to go too far into that. Let me just go on to something here. All right, now let's, let me just make it 
look at something here. The good news for retailers with security cameras is that the Washington and Texas laws apply only if biometric data is collected for a commercial purpose. Okay. Nothing but. Now notice how it says it doesn't, that's not defined. Commercial purpose is not defined. Right. Now, does this give companies who are collecting your data a way out? Because what is commercial purpose? Right. It is a commercial purpose. It is a commercial purpose. From the beginning. So you can make a claim. You should make a claim. It's always commercial purpose. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what their definition is. Because either they're using it for their well, own commercial purposes or they're well, selling that, it for commercial but, purposes. It, look, I just showed you guys. Let me go back. The data brokers. Why do they exist? Because it is being used for commercial purposes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. We just got to know that. Don't be naive here. All right. California, okay, California, Texas, Cal, uh, T Illinois, they have some pretty good laws. Um, look at this. Biometric information is defined in California as a, any single physiological, you know, anatomical, physiological, biological, or behavioral characteristic. What? How I behave, you see how I'm moving my hands and all this one? This is a biometric data. It's on video right now. It's being recorded. This is biometric data. It's being collected by Zoom. <laughs> All right? Uh, the way you walk is called the gait. Uh, I think it's called G-A-I-T, your gait, okay, the way you walk. Okay. Uh, maybe you pronate. Maybe you supinate, right? Maybe you have a limp, all these things. Um, uh, let's see, yeah, personal it's information. It's all personal information. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, we you hear personal information, but, but this is so important, a distinction to make. There's personal information. Yeah, okay, that's my my data, fine. Mm -hmm. Also my likeness, but whatever you want to call it, I have a private property right mm -hmm. to that data. Mm -hmm. It's collection use and storage. Mm -hmm. So you might call it personal property, but I'm going to claim a private property right to decide what to do with it and to make a claim against it with whatever I want that doesn't adversely impact anyone else. It's my property. Okay. So let's see. Uh, Illinois Supreme Court clarified BIPA plaintiffs need not plead an actual injury in order to be aggrieved. That's interesting. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. There's some case law that says you could just complain that your data was collected. And then the question is- That's what I was wondering. <laughs> right. So even if I wonder if you can even do it after you've been noticed that it's going to be collected. You can exactly. Still, like, exactly. Because that's why they're doing yeah. the notice. I think you can still make the claim that there's a data breach. And and I think you can make the claim. Yeah. I you mean, I think you that link with Joan. You're going to share that link? link? Yeah. You want uh, the Read, readsmith.com? So you, you, you got me thinking about property. So your labor is your property. There's that too, yeah. So the compensation you make for your labor, that's your property too. Yes. yes. But then you got, so I should have a security agreement on my compensation because now the IRS you wants to do that. my compensation, which is my Remember, property. There, there has to be a debtor. Do have a security agreement on, take a lien on the IRS. That would be fine. Yeah, because they want, my, they want a piece a of my compensation, piece of my property. And then, and then they have transcripts, which is my information on the FOIA, I mean, on their, uh, Computer and DISA files, you know, IMFs and all. So that's my property too. Yeah. So yeah that would it, be quite a damn big deal. Yeah, this would be interesting. why we're having so much problem with the IRS <laughs> is we're not making claims on our property. Mm. Right. So security footage. Okay. So, anyways, we get to this. Um, yeah, thanks for putting that in the chat. That's a yeah, lot. Yeah. The, these are the links I'm working with right here. Okay. okay. So, moving towards safely and, and in compliance. So, just whenever you hear that your data is being collected for safety and security, it's bullshit. You mm -hmm. can't you can't provide it because you can't guarantee it because you're not insured for it because there's no underwriting for it, and you have no legal duty. Therefore, you have no legal authority. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were we were doing this. Remember, we came up with this letter during the phony pandemic days when we were saying, hey, look, let's just look at it from a data collection standpoint. <laughs> do you really want my data? You know, behavioral would include- And yes, they patterns. do. Yeah, your driving patterns, right. So that's why I think a lot, many cars today are tracking, uh, you know, your speed, your average speed and your ways you accelerate, things like that. 
and if your car is swerving, that's collected. Uh, and uh, you know, using uh -huh. your, and all this stuff is being collected. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, okay. So can can someone mm -hmm. penalize me for putting a lien on my data? All right. So let's say let's say I do this against my bank. Right. I open a let's say I open a personal bank account. And then a month later, I file a security agreement against the use, collection, and storage of my data, including my biometric data. Because when I walk in the bank, they took my video image and all this stuff, right? Who knows? I, they, yeah, I want to put a claim on it. Maybe the bank might decide to close your account. I haven't seen that yet, but it's not that popular yet. Go ahead and try it. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> you got to try it. All right. So let's see. Consent. Anyways. So I'm, I'm going to do i'm saying your data is being collected whether or not you like like it. i don't like it but i do consent because i want things so it's a barrier to get normal things in society it's not fair but it's where, where we are right now in society because we've allowed it to get this far so what i'm saying is a countermeasure would be to put a claim on the on the data you have a right to do that and the law is on your side completely and and so let's get to the moment about okay so let's talk about Twitter and X here. Okay. So for some reason, Musk wants to call Twitter X. Okay, fine, whatever. So Twitter wants permission to start collecting your biometric data and employment history. Now that's being done right now. What, like I told you before, what is, what is the Twitter purchase about? It's about your data. And this tells you right there. The same with, if you ever, I don't know if you're driving a Tesla or if you've been in a Tesla before, but look at the, look at the telemetry that's being, uh, collected around the vehicle. Mm. Do you think it's it's actually collecting the grayed out images of vehicles, or do you think that technology is being used to know who's the registered owner of the vehicle, the cell phone data, all the cell phone data that the Tesla is grabbing as it's driving by, and all the Teslas in the area form a grid of information that's easily accessible by the Department of Transportation. And don't think for one second that Tesla is not selling that data to the Department of Transportation. Mm -hmm. That's, that's going his real product. Tesla. That's his real product. That's not, they're not selling Tesla. You should get free Teslas if you want one. I wouldn't even take one for free, but I'm just saying uh, the, the Teslas, the money for the Tesla is the data being sold to the DOT at least, if not other law enforcement purposes, okay? If not other... Uh, marketing purposes or, you know, business to business type deals. Okay. The data that you're giving it. Imagine, imagine you, if you hate the Tesla and you have an old beat up pickup truck that you bought for this one purpose. And that is every time you see a Tesla, you want to crash into it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying you should do that, but it would be quite obvious because of all the data being collected by the Tesla that you did that. You wouldn't be able to escape the liability for doing that because Tesla has you under surveillance for everything. I'm just saying, <laughs> okay? It's a surveillance vehicle. Now, it's probably more advanced than the Google vehicles that were around here. I mean, maybe Google is funding part of it in collecting the data from Tesla now. You don't need those cars driving around with the whirly uh, video cameras, right? You got Teslas. All right, so... Here's what it says. It will use Twitter X will use the collected biometric data for what? Safety. Security. Safety. And of course, identification purposes. Of course it is. What safety and security? How? How? I don't know. Maybe I'm naive. Uh, They're both gateways. Are you allowed in or not? Are you allowed access or not? That's a security right. and a safety question. The, I so think they're the both. Data is, is they're they're geofence everybody according to whatever criteria is wanted by whomever controls the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Elon's one of the good guys. Okay. Whatever. I think he's an idiot. He's a complete idiot. I mean, anybody can go do this now. Do this. Can I have another hundred billion? Okay. Now do this. He's not a genius. All right. Let me collect. It's based on your consent. You're not giving consent. Mm -hmm. It's not consent, but anyways. It's not. It's notice. Who cares? <laughs> Just put the lien on your data, okay? Class action lawsuits, that's not helping anybody. But anyways, this tells you right now, okay? Musk got Twitter, named it X, so that he can just market, collect and market 
consumer data for other businesses. It's at the gold mine. All right. Yeah. Electric cars are, are crap, just so if we want to be off topic here for a second. But anyways, I I have the like I'm not, you know me. I, I love making money. I'm not trying to scare you to, to pay me money to do a biometric data link. I've already shown you how to do it. Those of you who have who've paid me to, to learn how to do it, I hope you show other people. And I think it'd be great if you want to make it a business and, and teach people and give seminars and, and, and sell the work uh, on your own. You don't have to cut me in. I want to see more people doing it. Now, to talk about the money, Will, and there's nothing wrong about that. I'm just saying, okay, let's get right down to the bottom line. How do we make some money with this? All right, well, you can put terms on the use of your data, okay, the collection, use, and storage of your data, just like you would do for uh, any intellectual property. Okay, it's very similar, if not identical, as far as the law goes. So you can you can put dollar amounts that are owed to you for the use of your data. And I think my suggestion is it's very small amount, like pennies, like a few dollars. That's what I think anyways, because you're going to have so many of these and it's going to accumulate over time that you're going to make a decent claim if you ever want to make a claim. But what I'm thinking is if enough of us have these claims, why couldn't we consolidate, assign these security agreements into consolidate them into a company that looks good on the balance sheet? We can get an accounting firm to give us an official balance sheet that's that people would accept. Okay. The accounting firm would sign off and say, okay, yeah, we did the accounting and this is, it's worth, you know, $27 million in claims for, let's say, I'm going to just use the term intellectual property. It's similar to that. Okay. So if I have a company that's worth $27 billion, a million dollars, $27 million, maybe $3 million, right? Could I use that for business? Can I use it for borrowing money? Can I sell a share of that company to investors? Heck yeah. And then what? Woo, we can have some fun, can't we? Right? And who's going to pay for it? Because right now we're paying Google to get our data and give its own terms and do it, get scot-free with no obligation. But if we make a claim on it, we put terms on it, then we start getting paid. And I don't care about $8. I care about getting financing on a big corporation that has, you know, tens of millions of dollars in consumer data where we're getting the money, not them. So all we need is $27 million of claims on a balance sheet, of claims on a balance sheet, and we can borrow against it. I believe we can do that. Just like mortgages. Think of it as more. For a million. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you're just, if your, your business idea is like this. You, you go around to find people that wrote music and you buy the rights to the music. And then some of the music is worth a lot of money and some is not. Mm -hmm. But over time, it's like that you buy the rights to uh, publish books, right? Let's say there's people out there that uh, when they go to try to get uh, published, that no one buys their book. No one wants to do it, right? But you come along and you do it. But now you have all these uh, into all this intellectual property and, and it has a net value that can be evaluated by industry standards. And then once you have it on the books, you could conceivably go out and borrow some money or sell a share in the company. Because you have a legitimate standard type business model that's, you know, you could use nothing new. This is nothing new. I mean, look at already. I just showed you look at all the all these companies that are already making money on your data. Mm -hmm. How are they doing that? The same way you would do it. They're making money already. They're in the billions, if not the trillions. So maybe, hopefully that motivates some of you. Please learn how to do this. Now, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned that it doesn't really get us somewhere if we're going to be suing everybody. And, and there's no class action. Forget the class action and forget having to sue people. What I want you to do is know that the claim you're filing, okay, it's going to become a per perfected security interest, and it's going to have to show up on the balance sheet of these corporations that are the debtors that are collecting your data. It's going to have to show up. They have to account for it. They have to disclose it to the SEC. They have to disclose it to their investors when it becomes sizable. I don't know what number that is. When they realize it. Imagine if you know you, you bought yourself a house and then after a few years, um, it, it gained some equity, right? And then I came along and put a second mortgage on your house for $20,000. Would you notice that? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> your bank would notice that. You know, eventually you would notice that. Well, it's the same thing for the bank for the uh, these collectors of your data. You put a you put a lien on the on the data they're holding that's your data, and then fifteen hundred other people do that or thousand people, whatever. Wouldn't that have to show up? They'd have to figure out what the heck that is. John, is putting uh, a lien on your data the same as putting terms on the use of your data? Well, inside the lien, yeah, you should put conditions on the lien. You could just put a flat lien on there with the only term being it's a lien, right? But really, yeah, I, I mean, a lien itself has at least one term. It, otherwise, it's not a lien. If I just if I just recorded a piece of paper that said, hey, Google, Google collected my information. Right. It doesn't make a claim, does it? So a lien does at least have a term. And so and can you give an example of that? Yeah, the term should be you can collect, use, and store my data for eight dollars a month. Okay. And so forth and so on. Now I suggest in the terms that you have a dispute resolution clause, which includes an arbitration provision that excludes the court system, mm -hmm. which gives you a remedy. If you ever wanted to foreclose on your rights, you could simply get an arbitration award based on the face value of the terms of the security agreement. It would be quite easy to do. And once you're done with that, you go into the court and get it confirmed and the judge can't criticize it. He can't look at what you did unless there's some issue of fraud, which there would not be. And so uh, can you imagine trying to go to the court system, which is part of the banking system and make a claim against your bank or Google, which is really a banking facility. I mean, if you want to look at it, so is Amazon and all these places, PayPal and all that. You think that you're going to have a, an easy time in the court system? No, because it's an already an adversarial system that's against you. So avoid the court system using arbitration. Get an award based on, you know, standards and then go and confirm it in the court. Now you've got a judgment lien for the amount of money and or performance. You can make them perform. You can make them do things. You can make them stop doing things under court order. It's all in there. I mean, that's my version of it, but that's why I'm saying in this video because you want to you want to put terms. I mean, a lien is terms, and uh, you want to avoid the court system to enforce the terms. I think because I think you're going to have a problem in the court system, and it's going to be expensive anyways. Yeah, twenty bucks. Okay, fine. I mean, I wouldn't do it. Look, guys, don't do anything crazy. Like start telling them you they owe you gold. You're going to look like <laughs> a master. just tell them you want dollars. OK, if you like gold, use mm -hmm. their dollars and go buy some. <laughs> yeah. And you could say what, like five dollars yeah. a month or five dollars uh, yeah, credit yeah. credit for the company. Yeah, no. you, yeah it's in licensing the use of intellectual property. And, and so, yeah, you can put all kinds of terms as to um, how, like, for example, the use and collection storage of your data, they have to report to you how they're doing it. Like they, in my security agreement, I think I even put in there, they have to identify who the custodian of the data is and what's being done with it. They have to tell you. I mean, you could put all this stuff in there. I mean, use your, you, I mean, I, I recommend working with people and kind of have uniform terms. I like my terms, but you can make up any terms. I mean, like I said, I, I'm suggesting that you not act like a stupid tax protester and talk about, you got to pay me in gold, real money, lawful money. Don't do that. Just put dollars in there. I think I did a hundred thousand. I did Google. I think I put a hundred thousand. Why not? In, you know, licensing agreement. Yeah, and just know that they're already spending money on the acquisition of your data. You're just adding to the cost of acquisition. Just know. It's very, it's a very fruitful discussion you had here tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I hope that leads y'all to, you know, follow these basic principles, okay? Uh, you know, when someone says he's going to collect your data, he needs to have, you know, permission from you and or a legal right. And he needs, he gets a legal right from you, but he needs to have a legal duty also if he claims he's going to provide some sort of police function, like for your safety and security. Did I ask you to do that? <laughs> you know, I'll take care of that. Thank you. But if he is, then ask him, first of all, is can he actually do that? Do you have the financial means to do that? In other mm. words, do you have insurance? Mm. And as we saw, there is such insurance, right? But it's probably not adequate. 
So, yeah, I'm going to do all the data companies that hold all my medical records immediately. Certainly, the security agreement on them because they're all getting hacked anyway. Of course. Well, yeah. like I said, without the hack, you're still it's a data breach. You'll do it. And yeah. Every every one of you listening to this should you could and should make a claim against everybody for a data breach immediately. See what they just send them a letter and see what they do, and go from there. Send them a, and you know, if you really want to have some fun, go get a lawyer to say, get a lawyer, get a lawyer who'll do this. You you can find one that will write a letter, a demand letter to the chief counsel of pick your company, and de and and demand uh, compensation for the data breach of your data, and describe how the data was you know collected, stored, and used according to the company's privacy policies, privacy statement. And then make, have the attorney, your attorney, send a demand letter on his letterhead and watch the fireworks. You will open the door to all kinds of things. It'll use your creativity. Then what do you want to do? What do you want to do then? Not now. Anyways. Yeah. So you can start with their um their privacy, <laughs> right? You can start with that. Find out what you're working with. Find out how serious they are. <clears throat> See if there is something regarding biometric data or your likeness. And it's a contract. It'd be, it'd be interesting if the, I bet the company, if you get an attorney to do that, they would want to do a settlement. I think you would get a settlement offer. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to really rock the boat, you could just do that. You don't have to follow security agreement. You can just do that. But I would, I would start by, by putting some, some meat on it, right? Put some meat on it. Get a security agreement. Get some weight behind it. Don't just be like a, a whiner. But you could be just a whiner and get lots of, you know, get lots of traction there. But I would say put a security agreement. Make it your hobby. Make it your hobby. <laughs> Make it your hobby. Like you really should. Mm -hmm. Just like I was telling you guys about the, D the DOH. You need to defund your DOH. Mm -hmm. they, they shouldn't be talking about your health. How dare they? Mm -hmm. Misuse of public funds. Mm -hmm. I want to do the IRS. Do it. They got all my, the labor, my property. Do it. I mean, what, I'm already on the shit list. I'm about to get on the very top of it. <laughs> Maybe I should do Capital One. <laughs> yeah. Do it. I mean, they got your data, so. Thanks for posting that, Batman. Hey, Batman, if you'll notice uh, my YouTube. I had, I'm having, you know, help. You'll see my, uh, all my links in there. I'm adding, I'm changing everything. So, but thank you for po posting that information here. All right, y'all. I'm going to go. It's almost past my bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. It's great. Right, thank you, John. Have a Appreciate good weekend. All right, yeah. Got the right. brain waves moving. <laughs>